wherever you are, thank you for joining us. We appreciate this. Um, this is our first community conversation uh, since taking our break in uh, August. And so uh, uh, we're, we're excited to be back and we've got Danya. So uh, we're going to kick off. We're going to be talking Revit with Danya. Um, my name is Sean Hurley. I'll be your community host. And like I said, we're joined by, by the amazing and, and sweet and talented Danya. Um, all right, let's, all right, well, about me. Well, actually this, this slide needs to be updated because I did move in that time uh, away. So I am now in Bend, Oregon. Uh, my name is Sean Hurley. I am the Autodesk Community Engagement Manager. I'm, I'm a geek. I've been at Autodesk about 24 years. So welcome everybody. And Donya, please tell us about you. Uh, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm a huge Tennessee uh, football and basketball fan. We're at our first game tonight. I'm very excited. And I'm a Revit geek. Cad mama also. <laughs> yes, you, yeah. Long time fixture in our community. So we appreciate that. Oh, thanks for the update, Mark. 20 acre local fire. All right, next slide, please. So before we begin, we've, we've muted the lines to reduce the background noise, but we do invite you to turn on your camera so we can kind of get a sense of everybody being in, in this, you know, in the digital realm, kind of in the same room. We get to kind of see you. Um, if you have a question, either raise your hand and we'll call to unmute you and, un, and mute your line, or you can chat and type your question and we'll try and fit those in as we go along. Um, the session will be recorded and there will be a link to the recorded session uh, emailed to everyone after it's done. Next, please. All right. This is, I won't, I won't say this is my favorite part, but uh, um, the lawyers make us say it anyway. Um, we... We want you to make your decisions based on the products as they sit today. If we make any forward-looking look, statements about the future of a product, we ask that you still make the decisions on purchase or anything with the products based on how the products are shipping today. Um, also, that uh, Danya is uh, uh, not an Autodesk employee, and uh, um, so anything she says is her, her own opinions. So next, please. All right, community conversations. Boy, I almost forgot that line. Um, it's been, been a month, everybody. Um, community conversations provide opportunities for engineers, designers, architects, and makers to meet in a safe, live, virtual setting, to share expertise, get to know leaders in your field, and to grow your community network. The sessions are always supported by Autodesk community managers to help guide the conversation, feed important insights back to the community, to Autodesk, and support participants in getting connected back to the expertise you need. So with that, let's go for Danya. Thank you, Danya. Yes. Good, good morning. And good morning. Uh, good afternoon and good evening as it needs to be for you. I am... Uh, I said, Donya Tabor Hansen. I have been working in Reddit for 15, 16 years. AutoCAD before that, since 1.2 AutoCAD. But no matter where I've worked recently, the thing that keeps pulling me back in has always been the Reddit families because I find them the most interesting. So some of the things I've learned over the years I've been bringing out in these sessions. Um, so let's get right into the thing that you voted on. Our last session in July, we put up a poll and we had several things up there. And the thing that got the most votes was catalogs and library prep. So I'm so excited to bring this to you now. So in answer to your questions, here we go. Catalogs and library prep for Revit. Today's meetup flow is going to be, we're gonna look at when to make a catalog, uh, how to start a catalog from a family, how to create a catalog from scratch, how to remove unnecessary catalogs because sometimes you get things are catalogs that don't need to be and then we're going to look at uh, cleanup for families for library prep so can get consistent cleanup for all the families that go into your libraries so when to make a catalog <laughs> the most asked question when to make a catalog does the family have five more types and that seems to be a consensus that most of the experts have had, we've got five or more, you need a catalog. And why would you want to have all the extra types in a family when in a project when it's not necessary? And I know you can purge them out, but one thing that it does 
is it does bulk up your project. Case in point, I started a project. I called no families loaded and I just saved it. And then I loaded one family that had 29 types. Okay, it's kind of big. And you can see the difference in the two, so two files. I didn't place any of the families. All I did was load it into the project. So just by loading that into the project, this happened. That file size went up that much. So when do you make a catalog? Five, five types or more so that you only have to load the ones you want. So changing topics. So just let me see. Has anybody put any questions in for me, Sean? We're good. We are good. Yay. <laughs> okay. How to start a catalog from a family. Does the family have five or more types? <clears throat> 29. Yeah, that's definitely when it, somebody's writing on my screen. Um, that's definitely when you want to have a, a, make a catalog out of it. It's when it's got more than five. So the first thing you want to do is, I don't know how to get that red mark off the screen. Does anybody know how to do that? Nope, but it keeps going on. Okay. I sure hope I didn't do that. <laughs> no, it had somebody's name on it. Okay, oh. we're back and forth here. Okay, so we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna export the families out for the, to get the family types out, and it's gonna create a TXT file. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna pop over here to Revit, and this is the family that had 29 types in it. So to get this down to what we need. I'm going to go here and say file, export, family types. It's going to take the family name and the place, the locate, location where the family is saved, and it's going to export out Chevy Wire Centaur. Okay. So I can save that out. So now I want to open the text file in Excel. So let me grab Excel here and I'm gonna go open that text file. And let's go find it in my documents, community conversations, catalogs. Shelving Mark Centaur text, open. Okay, so it's going to ask you if you want to do a delimited file. Well, yes, you want to be delimited. And what it looks for is it's going to be a comma delimited file. So you're going to go to next and you're going to select comma. I go ahead and leave the tab on there. Never seems to bother me. And, and now I will select the comma. Now you can just hit finish here. Um, if you choose finish, it's not necessarily going to step three because that's where you choose the columns for formatting. They, they can all be left set to general. And I'll just, let me just show you what it does. But I generally just go ahead and right on through and go to um, to the next. So here I go to set it next and I go to comma. I'll hit the next here instead of finishing, but I, believe me, I don't hit this. It's one less keystroke button pick. Um, they all say general. You would be picking whether you want this column to be general, text, a date, or do not import the column to skip it. I'm gonna have to go through all the columns anyway, so I just go ahead and hit finish. So you can skip this one page if you want, and it's going to bring it all in. Now, when it brings it all in, I'm gonna slide over and look at all of these. What that has done is taken every parameter that is listed in here and made a column for it, every one of them. You see a lot of these are not used, so, the next thing you would want to be doing is in your Excel, you're gonna start cleaning up these, these unused columns and getting them out of there. Um, if the information is gonna remain the same all the way down the column, or if it's, if it's not used, you can just start deleting it. So if I were to get through with this thing, it might look a little more like this. Um, you want to organize the columns by priority. So I'll take the ones that I want them to see and move them up toward the front under B, C, D, E, because some of those columns will be seen when you see a catalog. So I'll move them up to the front and some of them that I can, I put toward the back. Um, 
If it's run by a formula, you don't need it. If it's constant, you don't need it. If it's not used, you don't need it. Remove it and then just organize yourself to what you need there. So in Excel, I have already got this one cleaned up just to save a little bit of time. So I've got it saved with the, this is the original txt file. And then this is an Excel file that I've already gotten straightened up, moved up front. I have a lot fewer column, I only go to Q. So I save the file always to an Excel. It's not necessary, it's just my personal preference. I do have reasonings for it though. The Excel file has saved me several times when the TXT file disappears. Um, but also when I'm training people to work with catalogs, it's a lot easier to tell somebody to go open up the Excel file. To me, the TXT file then becomes disposable and I can just let it go and delete it whenever I'm not, whenever I'm going to be updating a family, I update the Excel file. And then what I do is I save it out as a CSV file, common delimited file, which is what it needs to be. And I don't go with the CSV UTF-8 and I don't go with the Macintosh and I don't go with the MS-DOS. I go with the one that says common delimited file. So I save it out uh, to the common delimited file. And then what I would do is delete any previous TXT files. Because after that, I'm going to rename the CSV file to a TXT file. So let's go do that. Let me find my, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna take that Centaur TXT file and delete it. Uh, first, if I remember correctly, I have it open in Excel. So I wanna to to close that. So then I can delete this. And then after saving this, File, save as a copy. And we'll pull this down and drop down to my comma delimited file. You see how fast I go there? I go there a lot. <laughs> it's where you know where that is. <clears throat> and then I save that. And then I can come over here and take this CSV file and rename it to a TXT. Deal with the error message. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, I've done this before. I'm fine. You're living on the good. edge. What? I said you're living on the edge there, Donya. I'm living on the edge. It says don't want to do it. Okay. Um, hey, when, you get, when you get a break, we have a question that was topical to the step you were in. Okay. Uh, I had the CSV file open, so I, it wouldn't let me change it. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, what is the question we have? It is. It seems like when we, I've tried this in the past, any parameter that's a label for switching out nested families do not export out into a catalog. Have I missed something? And that was from Ray. Ray, I'm going to have to double check on that. Let me post it up. I will answer this in our uh, chat area after this. Okay. I we have it done one with a, are you talking about swapping out a type? I've swapped out types I know in the past, but I'd like to practice it and put the example out on the on the chat later. So I'll watch it. So put more Kate, out there later. Kate put the link to go to those uh, conversations about this session. So that would be a great place to yes. ask that, Ray, and we can follow up on that. So a nested family. Oh, and, and Emily added, as far as I am aware, they do not export. So nice little discussion there. Okay. We'll do that in the chat. It's always fun to continue this after this, this session. So um, with that in mind, <clears throat> let me get back over here to this and we'll um, go back and look at that later, but it will be in the chat. So be sure you go to the chat to follow up on that. Okay. But I will put an example up there for that. So <clears throat> I've saved the file Excel. I saved the CSV. I renamed it to TXT, well, after I deleted the first TXT, and then renamed the CSV to TXT, live it on the edge, and go up for it. All right, so then I want to go back and I want to remove all the types from the family. So I would go in and 
you can set and do um, this 29 times. You could also take it into a project and delete everything, but we'll talk about what happens when you open a family from a project later when we talk about cleaning up families. So I'm just sitting here clicking the little button and filling it out. <clears throat> I've got it down to one family type. Then what I will do is I'll rename the last family type to a generic name. Now, I have seen this <clears throat> two different ways. Pardon me. I use the word default. So if somebody gets a family and they load it and the only type they have is default, it's supposed to have been a catalog. I have seen it though where people will put need file name.txt for catalog as the type, which is also acceptable. I'm a little too lazy to type all that out. I use default. <clears throat> I would also add generic text to any text parameter that's being set in the catalog, such as a model number. You need to have something in there for it to replace it. So anything that's going to be run by the catalog, as far as text goes, I will put in a text value. And I use the word just default all the time. And then you want to clean the library with purges and eliminate excess parameters and such. So quickly over to that family. I would rename this. And I use camel casing for it. I don't do all caps. Because I also know that everything down here should be, my model will be default, default. <clears throat> if it comes in a schedule, having that lowercase lettering really makes it stand out because we're used to all uppercase. So I use some lowercase lettering in this situation because it's going to stand out if they use the wrong one. <clears throat> and then some purges. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Purge at least three times. And we'll get into more of the cleanup later, but basically that's how we get things cleaned up. And then you want to save the file and I would do a lot more and I'm cringing right now because I didn't do it all because we're going to go into cleanup later. <laughs> and then I want to save that file out. And then you can name all the files the same name. And usually you're going to add for a catalog, you're going to add the underscore CAT at the end of the file name indicating it's a catalog. Not necessary, but it's basically a typical uh, standard that I see in the industries. And then you want to make sure you keep all three of your files in the same location. But let me give you a little tip on this naming that file. You want them all to have the same name, so rename them all at the same time. And I just select them all and say rename and go here and say underscore CAT. And it renames all three of them at the same time, saving me that time of going back into each one. See, I don't like to type. Copy, paste. It's great. So then you keep them all together in the same place. And that way you can always just go in. And I will go in and I will delete that text file, edit the Excel file, save the CSV, rename TXT if I need to change anything else in it. That's, that's the method I use consistently. So before we move on, are there any other questions? No? I'm not seeing any. Okay. <clears throat> now that's how you create a, a catalog from a family. But if you want to create a catalog from scratch, the first thing you got to do, well, build your family first. Uh, get it set up, test out if it's going to be sizes. You want to test out that your uh, length parameters all stretch and move the way they're supposed to. Uh, test out the things that you're going to be putting in the catalog. To make sure that they work. <clears throat> if it has to do with swapping out anything, that like, we're going to try that nesting family thing. And, or if it's going to be links and stuff, you want to test these things out. And then you want to locate or create a list of all your types. And spec sheets are great for this. So I've got a spec sheet. Uh, there's a lot of catalog stuff in there. Yeah. I live on spec sheets. I tell you, that's, that, I do this a lot. <laughs> so the next thing you want to do is determine what parameters are really needed to be included in your catalog. Because you don't need them all. You just need the ones that are going to be included for what you're using. I'm going to pop over here to... I just hit the wrong rivet. I think I'm about to launch another rivet. Um, 
and I'm going to grab, okay, we did close that other one. I want to grab this dish table. We're gonna play with the dish table. Cause that's what the catalog I've got. That's what the PDF is for. This is a dish table. Yeah, I know if you're not used to seeing kitchen stuff, it doesn't have legs on the other side. That side fits into the dishwasher. So this is, this is the dish table clean side. So this is where the dishes would come out of a dishwasher. And this is the family that I have here. This is a right version, says R on it. There is a right and a left version. So that would have two different catalogs because one would be going one way, one the other. And then here's all the different types. Well, you can bet that I am not going to spend my time today <laughs> showing you all those types. What I need to find out is what I need to do in here. I'm gonna to have to have length. I'm gonna to have to have model number. And if everything else is locked down, yeah, my depth is locked. These are locked. I don't even have to have parameters on these because I'm not using them for anything. <clears throat> all this is gonna do, because this model is always gonna be 30 inches deep, all this is gonna do is change width. So my catalog would be as simple as having the type name, and I've already got them done here, so I'm not gonna have you watch me do all that. It gets old and tiring. You leave the first spot open. The first column does not have a header. That is your type names. If you're looking at it in text version, there would be a comma first in, in a TXT file. And then that bumps it to the next space, which would be B1 in here. Then next you're gonna have your parameter name, and then you're going to have parameter declaration. I didn't give it that name, I found that. That was the parameter declaration, and you need to know how to format them. So <clears throat> this is the site for the parameter declarations and what it gives you, and I'm gonna put this in the bottom of the chat. So you'll have this link available to you. But when you go to create a type catalog and you go and search for it, then you're gonna come down here to the bottom and see, there it is, parameter declaration. I'm declaring that parameter. A text parameter would be parameter name, pound, pound, other, pound, pound. And pound is easier to say than hashtag. So <laughs> if you're gonna do a link, you can also format it to what type of link you're gonna have. This is important if you're doing things in my world because we're in inches, because all of our kitchen equipment you know, we have a 48 inch stove or a 60 inch range or you know, everything's in inches, tables, shelves, everything. So that hurt my brain for a while when I first came to work in this business, but it's okay. Now. So you're going to go in here and look to see what they can do. And frankly, you can put all the other ones about anything. Um, but you do have this here that you can come and look at anytime you want to look at your parameter declaration and what it's supposed to be like. So Back over to the Excel file. I have taken that PDF and I've got all of these in here and all these in here. Well, you gotta know, you're gonna learn a lot about Excel doing catalogs because I would have put this first one together, the S60 down here. And then I would have taken this right here, copied, pasted, and you do this find and replace a lot when you're doing things like this. So I pasted it, replaced the 60 with the 70, and then replaced the 70 with the 30, but I did it again. So that would give me my catalog for what I need for this. So just putting it in there the way it needs to be. <clears throat> and then you gotta just, I'm on a spec sheet. So here's the left table, here's the right table. I'm doing the right table at this time. It'd be easy to do the catalog for the left, for the left table. All I gotta do is change all the R's to L's, but then I gotta build the geometry the other direction. And again, down here, I say, oh, cross brace. We have a cross brace on spec line and standard, but not on super saver. So let's look at a little thing for setting this up. If I go back to my 3D view, this, in the previous versions of one of my sessions, I talked about my parts department. I build a lot of things that have things that are similar. I use legs a lot. So this is my legs with brace. And I've got it where it's got a top collar. You can see a top collar up there. 
Uh, the bottom collar is turned off in here, but I can show you the bottom collar. It's just down here at the bottom. And it's, uh, it's turned off in this family. But here's the brace. And then since it's misted, this is just a little, this is not catalog stuff, but this is like some of my hints and hacks type of thing. But let's go ahead and set this up because I've got to add this to the catalog, actually. So when I'm going to have to do this, brace on. When I do a yes or no on off parameter, I always put it with the capital letters on so it stands out. And because I do copy and paste a lot, I'm just gonna copy this because I've got to add this to the catalog. It's a type, it's gonna be a yes, no, and it's going under other, fine. Let's leave it there and say, that's good. Now in the catalog, I've got to add another row. So I'm gonna to go to the next row here. You can see that this is overlapping a little, just whatever you want makes it better. And then I'm going to use the pound, 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 other pound, pound. I did asterisks. <laughs> pound, 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 pound. That'll work better. Now it's off in the S60, so that's a zero. Oh, no, 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 let's get this. One, a zero, enter, zero, enter. That gets old. Like I said, you're gonna learn a lot about Excel when you do catalogs. So let's just paint this all the way down to the bottom. Boom. Hey, Danya. Yes. Since you're also doing this as a wizard show on Revit, but also Excel, <laughs> Christopher had the question, can you use Excel formulas in catalogs to easily click and drag to autofill cells? I have used formulas in Excel to, to fill cells, to fill them in. Um, I'm not opposed to that at all. Yeah. So yeah, I have used formulas. And, and, and just as a nice, nice feedback loop for you, um, people found that they could put emojis in their catalog uh, uh, fields. And then the other was you blew minds. There was multiple people that you blew their mind when you did the select and multiple and then rename. So. Boom. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Mission accomplished there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you're too lazy to retype everything. <laughs> yeah. I've had to do that when I'm managing photo libraries. I found that out by accident by selecting them all and it renamed them all. I was like, oh, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, unless you didn't mean to select all of them at once. Whoops. Yeah. So I've got this in here. And the first thing I do is file save as. Oh, no, I just file save because it's. I gotta make sure it's saved. Well, the auto save is on, but file, save a copy, drop it down, CSV, save. And then I can go over to here and rename. This one already had a CAT after it because I was working on this catalog, but, and there was my error message going, oh, are you sure? Yeah. So that's how I can create a catalog from scratch. Going in, looking at the, whichever parameters I need to have in it, open up Excel, leave the top one blank, add your parameters and your parameter declarations on the top, and then just start filling in the information. And I live with a lot of spec sheets that have, you should see me with shelving units, that's always fun. But um, that's how I would start a catalog from scratch. So I started the Excel file. First column had no header, type name. Saved it to CSV, renamed to TXT. Make sure I've got one type set up in the family. So let's go do that. And in here I have, yep, default. I'm uppercase, checking all my parameters, make sure they're set the way I want. I'm default here. Yeah, it's a very simple parameter. Um, I can decide if I want to leave the default to be the brace on or brace off because it's going to be the catalog. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. Which way I do it, the catalog is going to set it, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and hit OK. And then I can save my RFA and I have my Excel, I have a TXT, and I have my family all with the same name, all saved in the same place. So, I made sure that also that I had the generic text where I needed it. 
and then clean up the family for the library. That one's already been cleaned, it's purged and everything. We're gonna talk about cleaning up here in just a little bit. So, are there any other questions about that? No, we're good? Yeah, this is fun. Looking good. Okay, how to remove an unnecessary catalog. I have seen a catalog with two types. Why did you do that to me? I don't wanna keep up with two files if I don't have to. Well, three, because I do the Excel. But sometimes you just need to know how to remove a catalog that's unnecessary. And if they don't have enough types in them, blow it out of there. Uh, but first you've got to get the family with all the types in it. And to get the family with all the types in it, you're going to load it into a project. And then you're going to just open the file from the project. And you'll have the materials from all the project in there too, but that's part of the cleanup. Um, and then you just clean the family up with your purges, eliminating excess parameters and stuff. Um, but like I said, be aware when you open a family from a project, there's materials that are going to be in there that um, will not be removed with a purge. These are the ones I call the Klingons and do not give me Star Trek cred. I do not do Star Trek. I just like the word Klingons for these because they cling on. They just hang on there. We're going to go look at that. So I'm going to come here. I have a project open. I have a family I'm going to go load. Component. <laughs> There's the desk. Yeah, we all know the desk. Um, I hit load family. And I'm going to go to my catalog. Let me get the, let me get the Scotsman here. It's an ice maker. It's a CATA catalog. And it has too much information in here. You see these extra lines? I have got two different library services that I use. They will take this one right here and try to, create, try to create a type inside the library for that right there. There's nothing in it. So for my purposes, I like to get these things out. All I need to get right now, and we're gonna look at another catalog here in a few minutes that needs some cleanup when we're talking about cleaning up things. So I'm just gonna grab these four types. That's all I need. Yeah, this was an old family, 2012. <clears throat> And it's going to show up finally under specialty equipment. While I'm here, I might as well rename it. I'm going to have to rename it sometime, so I might as well rename it. I'm going to take the QF off the front because our typical standard is different. It's an ice machine. And then I put an underscore. Then we have the manufacturer's name and a model. <clears throat> I can take off the underscore CAT because it's not going to be a catalog when I get done with this guy. And then I'm going to say edit this family. And I have this out here with the four types and it would have brought in all, everything the catalog had. So that's how I can get rid of an unnecessary catalog. And then I clean this up the way I would need to clean it up for our, prop, our library getting everything to our standards. So is there any questions about that? No, good, let's go to cleaning up. Now we're gonna clean up. This, um, this is one thing that we try to do with all families that we use. Um, Cause you know, we don't, go, we, can't, we don't create all of our families. Sometimes they come from outside. And when you get a family from outside, it's, it, it, you, you just need to get it ready for adoption into your library. So, you know, some families need adoption to help them along and we want to clean them up and make them look like the rest of the family. So I will start with pulling in the reference planes. When I taught about the reference planes in the first session, I think, maybe the second session of families, I taught about keeping the reference planes close in to where you need them and how you can govern how far out they're gonna go by working with your level lines in your front back or your right left view. I like the reference planes pulled in. So I'll go pull them in in the front, and then back and the left or right in the plan view and just pull them in. So let me get a family and let's go to clean it up. I'm not gonna clean this one up right now. I wanna go get one that's, I, I gotta get what I can clean up in time with us here. So I'm going to get uh, this little shelf microwave. I found this guy and I was just like, yeah, he's a good example of cleaning up. So when I'm talking about cleaning up the reference planes, 
let's make it easier on ourselves. Let's go down here and use isolate category. <laughs> that makes it a lot easier to find the reference planes. And I just want them pulled in oh, a locked one. Very good. This is also one that defines origin. Also very good. So let's pull him on in. I'm not going to lock him back because I'm going to want to pull him down in the front view also. <clears throat> and I want to get this one here. And just want to keep pulling them in until you get them to where they're supposed to be close in. You don't want reference planes that are strong sticking out because you can accidentally select it. Maybe if you're driving by, picking something else up, you know, you do a crossing window and wonder why you're picking up that family. Well, this reference plane was unpinned. Well, you see it was the unit center front back. That's a typical reference plane that is pinned. This web reference plane is pinned and should be because it also defines origin. So we're having a reference plane review. Not going to lock it. I will go back and get myself out of that view where I've just got my reference planes in there. Okay, I get my level and I pull them in. You see how long those reference lines are? That's because that's where the level was. So I pull my levels in. I turn that off. I don't need it. I can grab all these at once and just move them. More of my hints and hacks coming out. Move it with the arrow key. Uh, pull this over, et cetera, et cetera. I'm about through doing this because, okay, this one was the one that was unlocked. When I get done with the back, oh, that's, wait a minute, I'm in the front view. Yeah, so I will want to lock that one down. Yeah, let's go ahead and lock this in the center back. I'm going to quit doing reference planes there, and then I'll go over here and look and say, well, I need to get this done. And I found this. They were pretty good about reference planes, except for one. And I'll turn that off. This is a shelf. And this right here is where I would want to align something to it. But it says it's not referenced. Well, if I want to need to align a piece of equipment on that shelf that's going to be on the wall, but it sits on there, I need to make sure this is a strong reference and really should have a name. That's the shelf top. It's the top of it. Yeah. As long as it's got a name, you know, I hate to have these unnamed ones, especially if I need to use them. So I need to do that. I pull in, pull in, pull in. I'm done pulling in reference planes, but I wanted to get through that point. Um, come back to this view. Oh yeah, let's get out of this. Reset that. Okay, now in cleanup, let's start down here on the bottom. I'm gonna close off all, all the views I have open. I'm gonna start across the bottom and I want to go to a named 3D view. Well, they got one, yay, look at this. Close all others. Hmm. I like to go to home. And I wanna go to either home or some other angle that I can get to all the time. If it's a uh, detail view, of course you're gonna be in plan, but most of the time I like to go to the home view. That's where our people's used to looking at. It gives us a nice view of the, of the object. So I wanna to go to a 3D home view. And once I get it to home, I'm gonna lock that 3D view. And then I'm gonna crop it. And then I'm gonna turn the crop region off. But I wanna crop it and get it down. So I wanna get this, I'm setting up the preview view. So let's pop back over here and get this set up. I can't find the home because it's already locked. Well, it's not locked the way I want it. So I'm gonna unlock it. Now I can get home. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, anybody notice that little line back there? Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's an invisible line constraint. Well, I'm, I'm going to remove constraints because I'm going to delete that line. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me go ahead and finish this view up. So I've got my home view. Oh, zoomed in big. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Now, the line that I removed came all the way down to the level. Um, and it has to do with this shelf being a shelf that's going to be upper. So here's a hints and hacks for you. The shelf going upper can be up above your cut plane for your, um, your floor plan. So if it's up above there, then you want to make sure that something, the, the cut plane has to cut something. And if this is up above, you won't see it. But if there's something below that is a model point, you can, that is below the cut plane, so they would draw this model line, an invisible model line that would go all the way down. 
You don't have to do that. All you have to have is something modeled below there. So go with me on this one and let's go to the reference level. Well, to begin with, sometimes if I'm gonna put it and it's gotta be down here, if they built on the reference level, I can sometimes come down here and create a reference plane. And I put it about 48 inches because nothing's gonna be over eight foot. So if it's from there, so if the family was built here and not there. And I'm gonna give this a name. I like named reference plane. And I'm gonna make sure that this reference plane is not referenced. I know this is not catalog, this is bonus points here. Let's go to the reference level and I'm going to draw a model line. Make sure it's an invisible line. And I'm gonna just draw a little bit of model line down there. When I come into the front view, well, I don't even have to go to the front view, I go right here. I select it. I'm gonna edit its work plane and I'm gonna tell it to go down to that reference plane that is named line. So now I have something model that will be below the cut plane. So no matter what, that shelf will show up in your floor plan. So that just makes it so he always is there. Okay, so now back to my cleanup. I'm gonna go back to this view, close all this. Now if I do a zoom extent, he popped up there, why? There's a model line down here. To get around that, I can turn on my crop region and crop out the model line and everything else. I wanna get this in as tight as I can. I'm making a preview. I wanna see as much of the object as possible. I need all the white space. And then I zoom extents and then I can turn off my crop region. This only works if you are set to crop. If you turn the do not crop on, and do a zoom extents, it's gonna go like that. But by turning the crop reach to crop it, there's my zoom extents. The next thing, going right across the bottom here, consistent colors. That's our visual style. So you wanna make sure that you have a company standard and then always set your visual style to look the same. Follow that with detail level and be consistent in all your families and your cleanup wisdom and also your scale you want to be consistent so let's go finish up that row there should be applause right now that was that was pretty good <laughs> there, there is a question Donya, when you have a move. yes okay i'm medium and i'm this and i'm medium because all of our families that have clearances are 3d extrusions for clearances for doors and drawers and uh, mandatory clearances or service clearances, those are all 3D extrusions and they're only shown in the medium in our in my, in my company. So I always set my style to medium. So this is a good place, take a question, yes. So Emily asked, can you set the name 3D view to an orientation that isn't home? Will the thumbnail orient to whatever that lock yes. view shows? Yes, you, I just, ours is always set to home because it's a good 3D look. For, for families, especially in kitchens, you know, but it's, you can set it to whatever you want and then I always lock it. Because when, what happens when you do your file, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but that's okay. This is, this tells me why I do it. When I go here, I have set this view. I always want to go to options and then I want to choose the view that's going to be the preview until it to regenerate. So this is setting up my thumbnail preview. So it can be whatever view you want it to be. I would just be consistent all the time. So there, that got that. Donya. Yay. Okay, let's get back over here. So I'm gonna, so I went through all of those down at the bottom. Now I'm gonna go up under the manage tab. I'm gonna set my project units. I'm gonna make sure I purge. And then I'm gonna check parameters for company standards. And, and one of the other, um, I think it was the very first, when I was talking about family templates, um, I showed the Dynamo I used to add parameters and the Dynamo I used to set the parameters. So if you wanna go back and review the notes and those, I put the links for those, that was the second one. I put the links for the Dynamo in the second uh, family uh, session that we did. So I do make sure I've got all my company parameters in there. And then I wanna clean out the object styles and clean out materials. So let's go through the manage tab, which is what we're gonna do this. Okay. So under the manage tab, I check for project units, make sure they're set the same. I'm not gonna purge it because this family 
blew my mind. This is why he's in here today. I went under object styles. Well, this is not our code clearances. This is not what we call ours. So I can take those out. I don't have any clearances in here anyway, so I can take those out. You always want to check your imported objects. Mine blown. What the flying? I mean, seriously, people. Every AutoCAD layer and color. This is why you want to make sure you go in and check these things. And why does it pick that? I don't know, but if I select that, I can delete. Are you sure? 146 subcategories. Yes. This is part of cleanup. I check my model. I even check my annotation. You never know when something's going to show up in there. Because I've taught you all about having to do, having um, reference planes, different reference planes. And I check that. And then I'm going to hit purge before I hit the materials. I'm purging 17 materials, materials, asset, and text. And now I've got some more materials, assets. And that should do it. Yeah. But let's go here into materials. Glass. Glass was not something in here. But glass is one of those. I'm going to undo the purges. Glass is one of those Klingons. Okay. Now let's look at the materials and what they were. Clearances. Oh, this one wasn't bad. But let's see. Yeah, these are there's some that you know you can purge out, but there's some that will not purge. Let me go back and open. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's the one? Here, I've got it here. Look at this. When we open one and edit this. And when we purge, manage, purge, 11. Yeah, we have materials. These are materials that don't purge. I have not used earth yet. I have in, in any family in the kitchen or system zones or sliding doors. And these do not underground walls constantly. Yeah, no, uh, they don't purge. This is why when you work with families a lot, you want to go back to the library and open it. You don't want to open it out of a project. Just don't want to open out your project because you can't get rid of them without going in and, and just removing them individually. So yeah, the purging works for the most part until you get those that do not disappear. And for that, I can go in here and delete glass. I don't have any glass in this one right here. And then I have to purge again and then purge again, make sure. I want to see the zero. So then you want to go in and make sure that you have at least one type name. And you want to check your parameters, make sure they're formatted correctly, your uppercase, et cetera. And then you want to purge your unused, and then you want to purge your unused, and then you want to purge your unused. Why three times? If you had a nested family that wasn't used, purge one gets it, purge two gets its material, purge three gets its materials assets. And then you want to save your file according to company standards, and then load it to the library. And if there is a catalog, don't forget to clean it up also. Look for excessive rows that need to be eliminated. Um, some libraries file management software does not work well with those extra lines. Like I told you, it tried to make a type out of something that had text in it. We'll save to Excel, save to CV, CSV, delete previous TXT, rename CSV. We've done this a time or two. And you can rename all your files at once. So let me grab one more thing. I had a catalog here, this one. While well, I open a TXT file, you see it starts with a comma. You see I've got extra lines in here. These are the extra lines that I would remove. Those rows will be removed inside of Excel. Due to our time constraints, I'm wanting to pause on that and not do that at this time. Just mean open this up in Excel, comma delimited, et cetera, and delete those. So I want just the catalog stuff for our purposes because of the type of service that we use for our libraries. I don't need those trying to show up as extra types. Now, the next slide says, 
Q&A. So do we have any questions? We do, and we're gonna start off on a high note. Okay. Uh, Roberta said, Donya, you are my hero. I am also a food service designer, so it's rocking my world to attend this webinar that relates to my trade. That never happens. <laughs> right, yeah, we're a rare bunch, but hey, we're good. Uh, Johanna had a question. Is there a difference in file size if another visual style is used? And I, I think I know the answer to that. That's, I mean, they're no, normally just a, a raster image included in the file, if that's what she's asking. But Danya? I have not tested that out. I can test yeah, it I mean, out. Usually, usually Autodesk file formats, we just insert a, a static raster image at, at close or save or so. No, we don't do that. We just, we just either set it to, you know, render or consistent color or something like that. So it's, okay, file size. I will answer this in the, so I'm gonna get y'all to come back to the chat and chat with me some more until next month when we get back here. Awesome. Look at this. No more questions. No more questions? Okay. Then let me uh, remind you, uh, based on the voting last time, the next topic that we will be having will be about hints and hacks. Tips and tricks are so blase, I do hints and hacks. I like it. I'm coining that as my phrase. Then we're going to go to the favorite fabulous formulas for families in Revit. Um, and then we're going to be testing Revit families. Uh, and we're going to talk about the home wrecker. Um, if you are the home wrecker, you know it. They're the ones that can break anything. Um, but you need to know how to use the home record. Send things to them. We'll see what you can do with this, short of opening up and deleting parameters. So with that, don't forget the other community topics. This is a good time for a screen capture or, you know, where we, we signed up here. There's also others. And I will. Turn don't leave yet, to... people. Don't leave. We've, we've, we've still got time. And, and Robert actually had one question that I'd missed yes. up above. And I'll give you his and then I'll get him my stuff. Uh, okay. Let me scroll way back to this. Uh, he said, uh, so it seems you don't need to have all the family type parameters in the CSV file. Can you use no. the Excel CSV file to create parameters that don't already exist in the RFA? No, you cannot create parameters from the Excel. They have to be in the family already. It will give you an error message if you try to do that. Awesome. And, and thank you. I mean, Robert's one of the people that know, knew me before I joined Autodesk. So we're going yeah. back plus, over 24 years. So. And Danya, I've known you forever too. Uh, yeah. So thank you. This was this was great. This was great. We're going to wrap up this session with two final slides. Okay. Well, so, first, you want to hang around because don't go away. We got something yeah. for you to do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't run away. Um, in fact, Kate posted the link to a survey to give uh, feedback on the session. So take the time right now to grab that link and give her feedback. I mean, come on, how many times do we get a, an opportunity to have fun and fill out a survey? Yeah, this was fun. I do it. This is, this one's worthwhile. Look what it, look what it feeds, you know, Donya, it, you know, feeds a lot of these community conversations and, and gets us to uh, show the value in this and to support them. So it keeps them continuing. So anyway, um, so a few ways to engage with us in the, uh, the Autodesk communities was in the group network. So that's the user groups, the industry focused communities and the Autodesk forums, of course, which is like a living FAQ. And then in Twitter, you know, we have the at Aud ADSK uh, community handle. And with that, thank you. Fill out that survey, the link is up there. Um, it really does help support and, and uh, explains to um, some of our leadership the value that you feel that this program provides and also ways that we might be able to um, modify or adjust. We're always open for change in these community conversations and we, we appreciate your feedback. Kate just posted some of those uh, resources, uh, the links to those. So please fill out the survey. It helps everybody out and uh, we hope to see you again. And don't forget you have to RSVP for the community. Don't say I'm coming, I'm attending. You also have to RSVP for it. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. And it's free, so. Free. Yes, and you blow minds here. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. I really thank appreciate y'all taking time out of your day to spend with me. Thank you, Danya. And thank you, Kate, you know, for doing all the unsung hero, the work behind the scenes. Um, we appreciate that. So thank you, everybody.